Hello, my name is Jackie and I'll be talking about the little careers that you see in your everyday life and I'll be briefly talking about the general strategies that they use to forage for resources. Now let's just get into the video. Let's go! So, ants actually have different strategies in terms of gathering food. The strategies depend on the spatial temporal distribution of resources and the species of ants. The ants foraging strategies can be divided into three major groups. No recruitment, recruitment of groups, and chemical mass recruitment. In no recruitment, workers leave the nest, search for food, and return alone. No information about the location of resources is communicated, although the return of successful workers may stimulate other foragers to leave the nest. This kind of foraging is called solitary foraging. Next up, we have recruitment of groups. This type of recruiting can be split apart to four more strategies. The first up is social caring. Basically, after a scout ant discovers a resource, she returns to the nest to pick up a nestmate and carry her back to the resource. Second, we have tandem running. This is similar to social caring, but this time the scout does not pick up her nestmate, but instead leads one nestmate in a tandem pair, such that the antennae of the follower frequently touch the gaster of the leader. The third one is group recruitment. After finding a resource, the scout ant then lays the chemical trail back to the nest. The chemical signal, however, does not cause the worker to instantly follow it. The scout has to engage in a recruitment motor display inside the nest to activate the recruits to follow her along the trail. Last but not least, the group raid. This is similar to group recruitment, but the difference is in group recruitment, only two or a few dozens of ants are recruited. In group raid, however, a large proportion of foragers are recruited. For the last group, we have chemical mass recruitment. As the name suggests, strategies in this group will involve a lot of ants. This group's strategies involve using a chemical trail to forage. The first strategy is short-term trails. After discovering a resource, the scout ant lays a chemical trail back into the nest and other foragers will begin following the trail. If they are successful, they will add more chemical trail, reinforcing the original one, subsequently attracting more foragers. The second method that they use is the volatile alarm recruitment. As the name suggests, after finding a resource, the scout ant releases a volatile chemical signal that attracts nearby workers. Next up, we have trunk trails, foraging columns, and fans. Trunk trails involve dendritic long-term trails that ants follow, then radiating outwards to search for resources. Foraging columns are similar, but instead of dendritic shape, they take on column-like shaped trails and are shorter lasting compared to trunk trails. Meanwhile, for foraging fans, Unlike their foraging columns, the ants don't follow a trail before radiating outward. They fan out directly from the nest entrance in a particular direction. The next strategy we have is long-term trail network. Basically, it's a network of chemical trails lasting for months or, or years, linking nest or temporarily persistent food sources. Last but not least, we have the column and swarm rate strategies. As the name suggests, raid is a strategy involving a quick search mission of large group of ants that cover a large range of area in search for food. Usually, this strategy is used by nomadic ant species such as the army ants. That's it for this video. I hope you find this video informative and interesting. Really, these ants are really smart creatures. Who knew these tiny little critters could have some sophisticated food-getting strategies? That's it. Thanks. Bye-bye.